the second game of semifinal action in the CONCACAF Under-20 Women's Championship is finally here as Canada takes on Mexico in the hopes of securing one of those three coveted spots in the 2022 FIFA Women's World Cup in Costa Rica. I'm Casey White bringing this game to you today, so happy to be on the call for this one. This one should be an exciting one from Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Look at that view as we look at the stadium hosting the pitch condition, 76 degrees Fahrenheit, cooled off a little bit since this afternoon, 25% chance of rain and only one mile per hour win for these players. Great conditions in the Dominican Republic hosting this CONCACAF under 20 women's championship. Canada versus Mexico, both very dominant throughout their run to this semi-final game. But this is the one that counts for a World Cup berth. This is the one that both of these teams have been waiting for. Both group winners in each of their respective groups getting a spot in the round of 16 then going to the quarterfinals. The United States just securing the first berth to the World Cup by beating Puerto Rico 7-0. Canada beat Panama 1-0 to get to this game. Mexico 5-1 winners over El Salvador to get into this semifinal game on this Thursday evening. So both groups coming in with confidence and consistency, looking to take that final spot. It's going to be an exciting one. Make sure you stick around. We'll have national anthems and final preparations for kickoff when we return. Nacional de México.
passion and excitement exude from these players from Canada and Mexico as they sing their national anthems. We'll take a look at the lineup for Canada that Cindy Tai has put out. There's a lot of scoring presence in Kayla Novak and Olivia Smith, most notably. Sarita Thurton also has a couple goals of her own. But the back line of this group, Zoe Burns, Mia Ponte, Jade Rose, and Vivian Bissett, a part of the combination of this Canadian team that has not allowed any goals in this qualification tournament. To take a look at our officials, Astrid Gramajo, our center official, assisted by Iris Vale and Lords Noriega. Our fourth official, Melissa Borjas from Honduras, as well rounding out the officiating crew. As our captains get together, Jade Rose and Annette Vasquez meeting at the center for the exchange as we get closer and closer to getting this kickoff going in the under 20 women's championship. And we also have VAR available as we have through this entire tournament. Just a great thing for the tournament to have at their disposal. Ekaterina Koroleva, our VAR official, and our VAR assistant, Benjamin Witte from the Cayman Islands in the booth looking on rounding out that part of the officiating crew. And Mexico's lineup, starting 11, Annette Vasquez, the captain. The goal scoring of Aviles and Malion, their com combination has been so good for Mexico. But watch for Daniela Delgado in that midfield. She controls the tempo for Mexico. They've enjoyed so much possession in this qualification tournament. She is one of the main reasons for that. Canada taking the field as Karpenko will go to her goal. And Mexico final huddles as the seconds wind down to this all important kickoff for the semifinal game and a World Cup berth. Three spots available in the World Cup for the CONCACAF region, in addition to Costa Rica, the host nation. Both goalkeepers urging on their team as you take a look at the captain, Jade Rose, and Michaela Small in midfield for Canada. So many players have gained so much experience for these rosters. And now these in the starting 11 today here in Santo Domingo. Gramajo will wait for final go, and there we have it. We are underway as night falls in Santo Domingo. The Dominican Republic hosting the under-20 women's championship as Canada controls possession early against Mexico. I'm Casey White on the call for this second semifinal matchup as Mexico presses high and their black and purple kits attacking from right to left. Canada with the throw in attacking left to right in the white uniforms. Ramirez getting high on that left side, but they'll elect to go long through Villanueva. Aviles, the leading goal scorer from Mexico, gets her first touch. will look to go forward quickly, quickly, but well done by Malion taking over possession. There's a lot of expectation behind this one. Both teams starting very quickly, going end to end here in the first two minutes of the game as we get a look at Cindy Tai, the head coach for the Canadian under 20s. Delgado will let that run across the end line. Goal kick to Mexico. Maribel Dominguez, the head coach for Mexico, the most capped player for the Mexican women's national team now at the helm. 
of this group appointed by Monica Vergara and assisting her with the senior team as Mellonhorse takes over in the middle third. This one clipped behind, too much on it. Espino will let that run through. on by Ramirez. Aviles with the flick as Villanueva chases. And Mexico coming out in their traditional 4-4-2 system of play. Most of the tournament has really looked like a 4-2-4 as they really have dictated play a lot in possession. But Canada, as you can already see, pressing high on the last two opportunities for the goal kicks going to present a bit of a different challenge to Mexico with the high press from Canada. Novak pressing a little bit higher as Thurton joins. Lopez doing well to penetrate into midfield, taken over by Thurton in that middle third. Recovery by the back line of Mexico and they'll take over possession. Well controlled by Villanueva as Mexico looks to build. Molion played into the final third. Right footed ball, she'll cut it back. Small misses, but initially gets the clearance. Monroy will take over in the back line. Her sixth appearance of the tournament and her fifth start at the right back position. Smith's tackle falls to Mellonhorse, but Dana Gutierrez will make sure that doesn't go any further. Zoe Burns looking to go up the far side flank. Well defended by Malion. That'll be throw in for Mexico. Canada in a 4-3-3 formation as they've done throughout this tournament. No real reason for either of these teams to change. There's been a lot of success. They have their principles of play. That one turned over. And that'll go out off of Serena Thurton. Full kick. helping that one on, as does Malion. Thurton pressing, putting Lopez under pressure, well dealt with. And you can see the high press from Canada retreating as Zoe Burns, but Malion right on her, well dealt with by the left back. And she'll play in combination with Bassett to get away from pressure. Almost six minutes in, you can see the energy from both of these teams, what this game means, both starting very quickly. You can expect to see the style of play perhaps settle down a little bit in possession as the game goes on, but both starting with quite a bit of energy and very active as the play goes from end to end early on in Santo Domingo. Smith finds Novak left. This one launched into the area. Nothing to challenge Espino. Canada matching up on the center backs, not allowing play to be set. Espino goes long, well won by Bassett. Handball, free kick to Mexico. It's 
Small immediately stepping to ensure nothing is played short and quick by Mexico. one played long, a bit too eager to get in behind as Espino will set play. And again, the wingers of Canada matching up with the center backs, not allowing possession to be played out of the back as Mexico so often does. Malion under pressure by Small, already over the line, and that'll be a Canada throw. Small finds the feet of Novak in the final third. She'll look to go 1v1 against Daniela Monroy. Delgado giving some assistance to Monroy in that wide space. <laughs> Under pressure is Gutierrez as Canada takes over, finding a numerical advantage in that midfield against the 4-4-2. Thurton finding Ponte wide, plays this across blocked. Samantha Lopez doing well to recover. Alexandra Ramirez, some good 1v1 defending work for Mexico in that wide space. <laughs> Clever ball by Aviles to get out through Delgado and she'll go the leading goal scorer for Mexico is off and running she'll cut back waiting for numbers to join as Aviles that one a tough ball and small steps in Villanueva will press. This one will go to Mexico, and really only a handful of times that we've seen Mexico down in this in as Canada had a very quick start. Something Cindy Ty is probably very happy with, but defending now, they're called upon. This one played across. Well defended by the captain. Both Mexico and Canada group winners. Mexico leading group F to get into the round of 16. Canada winning group G. Both very dominant performance, not only in possession as we see them exchanging possession here in the semifinal game, but dominant throughout group play, the round of 16 and the quarterfinals as Ponte will look to clear that. Most recently, Canada tested against Panama in the round of 16. The game in San Cristobal, the entire field underwater, winning 1-0 Canada to advance to this game versus Mexico, but a tough test in Panama in tough conditions. Gutierrez looks to change the point as Ramirez joins.
tackled by Smith. No deflection, that will be Mexico throw in. Olivia Smith is one of the leading goal scorers in this entire tournament with seven goals. Kayla Small under pressure, Mexico throw. Good space in front, the little slip ball through Villanueva. Carpenko able to come out and make sure there's no danger there on the blind side run. The combination of Carpenko and Giorgio in goal for Canada has not allowed any goals. Space touch lets her down, and Ponte will take over this throw in on the near side. Switching the point, the center midfielder as Monroy looks to probe in that far side. Malion trying to get around Burns. This is a good matchup on the far side. Malion gets the better of Burns on this one. Early to Aviles. Too deep. Karpenko will take over. And that's a matchup to watch on that far side. Natalia Malion, three goals, two assists already in this tournament. Zoe Burns, the left back, one goal, four assists from her left back position. A good battle over on that right side as Malion drops a little bit deeper. Aviles getting around three Canadian players, opening up his Villanueva, but Aviles goes herself. The space open on the left side for a slip ball, but Aviles leading this team in goals takes the opportunity to get the first shot on frame. This one direct, Novak will chase. This one goes inside to Mellonhorst, looking to play it across, well defended. And that one goes out of bound, Kimberly Guzman up to the task in the penalty area, but a corner kick to Canada nonetheless. This one driven near post, Monroy able to get ahead on it. Burns will set up to take another corner kick for Canada. Short through Smith, hard tackle on the edge of the penalty area. Play on, says our center official Jade Rose, getting that one on frame, just tipped over by Espino. But surely this challenge might be looked at by our VAR officiating crew. Right on the edge of the penalty area as Olivia Smith appeared to have positioning. But nonetheless, this one goes to the back post and Jade Rose forces a great save by Celeste Espino. Here's we will have another corner kick 
as Astra Gramajo takes a look around Espino. Kayla Novak positioning right in front of the Mexican goalkeeper. The left footed service from Burns. Espino able to come out and snag that one out of the air. Zoe Burns has taken most set pieces during this tournament. She's been the set piece specialist whether free kick or corner kick for Canada. And you can see why with the service. Smith taking over in front of the back line. Good recovery from Gutierrez. Clever play from Aviles. Malion. Molion continues to press forward. Avila is joining. This one a little heavy, but Avila is able to keep it. Finds Molion again, not quite. Appeals for a deflection. But this will go Canada's way for a throw in. Maribel Dominguez has worked with the U15s, U17s, now the manager of the U20s. Who better to help lead these groups than the most capped player for the women's national team and top goal scorer. And one of the things proving difficult for Mexico is the numerical advantage that Canada has in midfield. Three against two naturally and dropping Olivia Smith in there at times, a 4v2. Malion coming back to help. Lopez trying to find some space in there, not able to as Walk takes over possession for Canada. Malion tripped up, small with the foul, free kick to Mexico. This inside space from Malion is a spot that Mexico trying to take advantage of as Burns doesn't step in, but Michaela Small does and commits the foul. The 18-year-old from Monterey Aviles will step up to this set piece as Karpenko prepares for an opportunity in behind this back line. Clipped in behind, defended well by Sonia Walk. Throw in Mexico's way. Velez looks to serve. This one trickles through. Molly Owens there. Hops out of the way as Karpenko alert to the danger in behind the back line of Canada. And she'll start the counterattack through Burns. Villanueva doing a lot of defensive work for Molly Owens, who made that initial run in behind. Well played by Burns. A lot of space in midfield. Smith going to her left. Takes three players to dispossess, but they finally do Mexico.
Lopez will look to start play over through the center back, finding some space she normally hasn't had as Thurton is usually a little higher up the field. Canada defending in that 4-4-2 formation, although attacking out of the 4-3-3, dropping Smith in, causing some problems in possession for Mexico. So far, an attractive, a, a tactical effective setup from Cindy Ty as that one goes out of bounds off the foot of Lopez. Be a throw in the far corner for Mia Ponte. Thurton trying to help this one on. That'll go over and an offside call on that pass to Thurton from Nikayla Small. Eager to get in behind is Sarita Thurton. Good call by our assistant referee. Delgado will go the opposite way for Mexico, looking to get numbers forward quickly as Mexico as they build out. This one pops through to Vasquez, the captain, cleared by Rose. Drawing the foul is Aviles, a free kick in a dangerous area for Mexico. Aviles smart, just keeping body position as Ponte comes through the back. Canada only putting two players in the wall. Monroy trying to inch forward on this near side for Mexico. Let's see what the service will be. It is across the box, but not well taken by Aviles. And a missed opportunity for Mexico in the 25th minute. We're in the 26th minute in Santo Domingo. Canada taking on Mexico in the all-important semifinal match for a World Cup berth in August of 2022 in Costa Rica. I'm Casey White on the call for this one. So far, both teams showing that they can create some opportunities, but nothing real clear quite yet in the attacking third as both teams try to establish more possession that creates more attacking chances as Monroy tries to get around the outside of Maliona. She goes forward, continuing to play Monroy. Two runners in the box for Mexico. This one across. It's down. Carpenko able to secure that one, but Monroy getting forward and Villanueva, one of the runners in the penalty area for Mexico. And the foul called on Villanueva at the end, protecting Carpenko. Mexico's most recent win coming against El Salvador, five to one win. They outscored their opponents 13 to zero in group stage and then adding on an additional 14 goals in two games, Mexico against El Salvador and Curacao. That was in the round of 16. 
This one played through. Villanueva collects on the right foot, redirects it in front, and it's in! It's in in the 27th minute! An opportunistic finish from Annette Vasquez puts Mexico up 1-0 over Canada. Annette Vasquez coming through in a clutch way here as Villanueva really just tries to keep this one alive, coming through with the left foot, the captain, and the best opportunity that Mexico has seen so far in this first half results in a great goal for the Mexican center midfielder and the celebration start for Mexico as they enjoy this lead. The 27th minute goal for Annette Vasquez, her second of the qualifying tournament. A player so important in midfield, the captain for Tempo, has come through this evening so far and has put Mexico on top of Canada. Canada taking advantage of that 3v2 overload in midfield to keep possession as Burns flies forward on the left flank. She'll possess with Novak. Burns now out of position as she committed way up the field as Molly Owen looks to take advantage in Mellonhorse chases. Ramirez put under immediate pressure from Small. And the outside backs are really the out ball for Espino, but that rotation from Small cutting it out well there. Lopez does well to get out of pressure, well done by the center back. Velez gets around initial pressure. Well done to get the ball behind, but Jade Rose there to cover for Canada. A little bit of energy now in the offense for Mexico after getting that first goal. Canada really generating more of the attacking opportunities and threats prior to the 27th minute goal, but now Mexico looks to build on the lead they've created. Gutierrez. Ramirez will put this hopeful ball into the box as Delgado chases. Malion started this initial one with the run into Villanueva for her second assist and does what she should do here. She initially takes this away and not able to get her own opportunity and selfishly just putting it back into an area that is dangerous in the middle of the penalty area as the foul's called, drawn by Samantha Lopez. And so far in this game, Olivia Smith really having to do a lot of defensive work for Canada. The dribble penetration from the center back earning the foul for her team. And they'll elect to play short as Smith chases. Four around Molly Own. That one's cleared. Mexico now establishing possession a little higher. Canada dropping into a 4-1-4-1 defensively. So when they're defending half, defending out of a little bit of different system of play than the 4-4-2 higher up the field. Vasquez, the goal scorer, has some space, finds Aviles. 
Gets it behind Aviles on the right foot, and it's in. She doubles the lead, no. What thought to be a 30 second minute goal called offside by the assistant referee. This will certainly be reviewed since it did result in a goal. Uh, it will be an offside, yes, very much offside. Doesn't need to be reviewed. Three to four yards by Avila is eager to get in. Still one nil Mexico. Foul on Delgado. Melanors has appeared in all six games. This one, her third start for Coach Cindy Ty in midfield, doing a lot of work in there, the University of Oklahoma player. The first goal that Canada has given up in this entire qualification tournament, five games prior, no goals against. But a team that has proven that they are able to score goals consistently. So certainly not a team to count out as they do have the leading goal scorer of the tournament in Olivia Smith, who's tied with Michelle Cooper from the United States with seven goals. push from Monroy and that'll be a free kick to Canada. Novak drawing the foul, not giving her much space in that middle third and Bissette will step up for this one. Dangerous ball in, Sarita Thurton gets ahead to it and Espino will ensure this does not go out for a corner kick. Ball lifting it to Thurton. Lopez has to come across. Thurton, lots of pressure. Avila is trying to get Mexico out through Gutierrez. A lot of pressure from Canada in search of an opportunity. Small looking to find Smith. Leone intercepts the ball from Walk. She'll go herself, looking to take on Bissett. Well delayed by Vivian Bissett and won by Zoe Burns. Canada looking to attack while Mexico's out of their defensive shape. Small able to continue forward. Aviles with a little meg, but well recovered by Ponte. Touch by Thurton, she'll go down the near side flank. Early ball in behind, this is a great ball, but not on the same page as Kayla Novak, but that ball behind the back line, a great look from Sarita Thurton as the back line of Mexico retreats. 
in Canada in the 4-4-2 defensive formation, causing Espino to have to go long. Small looking for Smith. In the 1v1 is Smith, a strike to the near post, save! Espino, corner kick Canada. You can see why Olivia Smith is such an attacking threat for Canada. Great opportunity, perhaps already going wide, but you never know, Espino with the save, but Olivia Smith tied for the lead for the Golden Boot so far. First two corner kicks of the game, very dangerous. This one electing to go short is Zoe Burns. A 2v2 in the wide space. This one not as effective for Canada. And this one cleared to Aviles. And she'll provide chase. Good distribution by Karpenko. Rose. That one a little heavy, past both Smith and Thurton for the goal kick. Jade Rose, the captain, one of two players that has caps for the senior Canadian team. Both Rose and Smith, both have two caps currently. So one up top for Canada, one anchoring the back line with a lot of experience. Foul called on Jade Rose coming through Cleet in the air on that one. Winning the battle, but getting the foul called with the high kick as Villanueva gets out of the way of that one, rightfully so. <laughs> Mellonhorse earns the foul and free kick for Canada. The difference in this one, the 27th minute strike by Annette Vasquez, as Gutierrez and Vasquez put pressure there, Gutierrez fouling. But really it's been an end-to-end -end battle on both sides with perhaps Canada more in the attacking half than Mexico, but just clinical by Annette Vasquez off the hopeful ball from Villanueva, and that's the difference so far in the first half. Better build out play from Mexico there. Good work by the center back Lopez under immense pressure from Sarita Thurton. Play on, says Astra Gramajo. This walk will recycle back through Karpenko. Well cut out by Ramirez. You can just see the shape of the Mexican back line defending the counter attack. All three remaining backs retreating very well and able to win that and establish possession in the middle third, which they weren't doing as early on in the game. But now possession a little bit higher up the field for Mexico as Gutierrez continues to penetrate forward off the dribble. Inside run by Ramirez.
Delgado appealing successfully for the throw in for Mexico. Ponte elects to go long. Smith running onto this one, but well dealt with by Guzman. Thurton takes over. She'll look to go forward. Decides better of it. More numbers forward for Canada. in the favor of Mexico as Nikayla Small will be forced to retreat backwards and get into defensive shape. Cindy Ty looking on her team 1-0 down in this semifinal matchup in the first half. Lots of games still to be played and Canada ability to score goals evident in this qualification tournament. Getting around the outside is Gutierrez, but Aviles goes inside towards Villanueva. This one pops down, but cleared out. Ramirez will take over as they establish possession in the attacking half, Mexico. And there's been a shift since the 27th minute goal. Mexico establishing a little bit more possession higher up the field, growing in confidence. And transitioning into that 4-4-2 block as Thurton pressures Lopez. Malion finds Aviles, continues with the run Malion to the near post space. Aviles slowing down a bit. The timing just off on that one, but then Aviles drawing the foul on Ponte, a couple hard fouls from Mia Ponte in this first half. The last one, Mexico didn't really create a big opportunity out of, but just coming through late, Avila has a cheeky little clip to get out of there, get the ball out of there at least, but does draw the foul. Monroy will step up to this one. Avila has took the last set piece. As we approach the 45 minute mark, and these are some big moments for both teams. Canada surely wanting to stay locked in on this one, ensuring nothing comes from this opportunity. Mexico looking to double their lead off a free kick. Committed forward, Monroy with the service. This is dangerous in the backside, and Lopez, the timing, not able to redirect the header down and on frame, but a dangerous run from the center back, and that will be it. There will be no additional time as Astra Gramajo gives the halftime whistle. A 1-0 lead to Mexico off an Annette Vasquez goal in the 27th minute, an end-to-end -end game right now, but Mexico on top. Stick around and we'll have highlights and stats coming up here shortly.
It's halftime in Santa Domingo, the second semifinal matchup. This one between Canada and Mexico. An entertaining first half, really end-to-end -end action. This save from Espino, one of the main highlights of the first half as she tips this one over the crossbar. Jade Rose, dangerous on that set piece. Avila is looking to find Molione behind. They've been a pair throughout this tournament that have caused problems for opposition, but Karpenko able to clean that one up. There's a big midfield battle going on in this game. Not a ton of opportunities in the final third, and for two teams that have such attacking presence, I assume more will come, but this was the breakthrough as Villanueva makes that slashing run into the box and finds Vasquez for an amazing volley in the 27th minute, Malion playing the ball in behind, but Villanueva just making sure she keeps this one alive. And then Vasquez with a great individual effort. That's the difference in this one as the captain steps up and gets one opportunity and that one is all she needs to beat Karpenko in Canada for the one nil lead. These balls in behind proving good for Mexico. And growing in confidence throughout that first half was Mexico. Avila started to get more into the game, drawing some fouls and some creativity from the left winger who leads in goal scoring for Mexico. And then Olivia Smith on the opposite side with this opportunity. A good strike to the near post, well taken on the first touch, but Espino puts that one out for a corner kick. A few set piece opportunities coming through. Samantha Lopez, who's been so good as a center back this game for Mexico and stifling the Canadian attack, getting forward on that one. But the only one breaking through was the goal from that young woman, Annette Vasquez, the 27 minute strike from inside the penalty area. Two very good teams battling it out here as we look at the halftime stats. Four to two in shots, Mexico leading. Only one of those on goal, and it's the goal that separates us so far. Seven to five in fouls, seven towards Canada, five to Mexico. The possession, 55% in favor of Mexico. A lot of that coming in their defensive half and further on in the first half as they grew in confidence after that 27th minute goal. But this one, far from over. Canada has such an ability to score goals. Mexico as well, but they do have the one nil lead. We will have the second half kick coming right after, up right after this.
halftime is coming to a close. Welcome back to Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Mexico 1-0 lead right now on Canada in semifinal action of the CONCACAF Under-20 Women's Championship game. Estadio Olimpico Felix Sanchez saw an entertaining first half in which Annette Vasquez got the goal for Mexico to give them the lead. Final preparations for both of these teams as we get ready for second half kickoff. Canada, a team that has been showing all tournament that they can generate a lot of attacking chances, going to need to do so in this second half, being down a goal as the nightcap continues in semifinal action. It's going to be a substitution as Holly Ward is going to come into the game for Sarita Thurton, one of the players that is on the bench, Holly Ward now entering a proven goal scorer, four goals so far in the qualification tournament. So a substitution looking for a little bit different look up top for Canada as they go in search of that equalizing goal. tournament Annette Vasquez in the 27th minute Holly Ward coming in at halftime as Mexico takes over possession in the black kits going left to right Canada and the white kits I'm Casey White joining you for this game this evening as Espino has to clear that one out under the pressure from the halftime substitute Holly Ward Lopez will play that one forward, center back to center back as Jade Rose takes over possession. No substitution changes for Mexico at the half, only the one coming for Canada. We're made to be seen if there's any tactical changes made by Cindy Tai or Maribel Dominguez, manager for Mexico during this second half, only the one personnel change for Canada, but the tactical side, we'll see as the half continues, as Holly Ward battles and gets her first touches of the half. Intercepted by Molly Owen. It's a 3v3 at the back now, creating the 1v1 for Villanueva. Recovering players for Canada on frame. Karpenko with the save from the center forward, Villanueva. Mexico enjoying 55% possession in the first half as that one goes over the sideline. And it's quite a feat with the way that Mexico is set up, only having two true center midfielders in that space. But Vasquez dropping off into the attacking mid roll and Gutierrez playing in the holding mid. They've done well against four from Canada quite often centrally. Novak looking for the ball in behind. Ward makes her first run, almost there. Espino and Lopez collide, but the ball safe in Espino's arms. Small takes over possession, Molly on chase. The 
the wide space for Novak. Can she get there? Yes, left foot. Not able to get anything on it to get it across. And Monroy cleverly lets that one go out for a goal kick. And that's one thing Canada early on in the first half had success with was creating those 2v1s in the wide areas. Later on in the first half, not being able to do that so often. So for the success of Canada, those outside backs getting forward and creating the 2v1 is going to be important as this one takes an interesting bounce and that one goes out of play. Early ball across from Novak as Ward battles. Ramirez clearing. Collision there. It is going to be a foul, but it's going to go against Novak. Delgado clutching her face. Novak not pleased with that one. Novak trying to keep possession and understandably not pleased on that, taking a hit on the ankle initially. And Novak a little hard done by on that one as Delgado is back up. Villanueva takes a hard challenge. Bassett is going to be carded for that in the 51st minute. Villanueva checking back into that space from her nine position. Bassett coming in very late there. And two players for Mexico on the ground as Burns gets into a battle with Malion as well. Center back Vivian Bassett is having her fourth start of the qualifying tournament, but has had five appearances from that center back role. Very steady player for Canada in the back. Well taken by Burns. A second opportunity for Burns looking to go forward. Molly on giving chase, continuing to go. No help for Burns. Throwing to Mexico. And Mexico doing much better defending in those wide spaces, a staging area for them to win the ball committing four players to the wide space against the two from Canada. Smith looking to go forward, gets away from Gutierrez, a run from Ward inside, looking to slip her in. Not able to do so, that one will go all the way through to Espino, who will keep it at her feet. Mexico in no rush, enjoying the 1-0 lead. Smart from Celeste Espino, and then she'll start play. Sixteen of the 20 players for Mexico currently play in Liga MX Femenil in Mexico. 10 of the 11 on the field this evening also do the only one. The one player that does not play in that league is at UCLA in the United States and Samantha Lopez. But the professional environment in Mexico proving to be a great place for development for these players. Monroe. 
Roy will look to join the attack for Mexico. Well defended by Burns. Appealing for the throw in, she'll get it. But well done by the outside back for Canada. Delgado finds herself in front of the back line with lots of space. Malion on the right foot in the 1v1. She'll go. Well defended by Zoe Burns and earns the foul. <laughs> Zoe Burns not only defending well in the 1v1, but wins the foot race to get position and draw the foul on Natalia Malion. Again, a great matchup on that near side flank. Delgado challenging, excuse me, Monroy challenging, called for the foul as Olivia Smith, a center forward, drops back into that space. And our center official is going to want to have a conversation here potentially with the players from Mexico and Daniela Monroy after the challenge. Both challenging, but Monroy coming over the top. Definite foul against the outside back. Burns has been the set piece specialist all tournament for Canada. She'll step over this one. High line from Mexico. Burns looking for the back of the penalty area. And that one will trickle over the end line. Villanueva doing some defensive work coming all the way back. Pressure immediately from Novak. Espino not taking any chances, but the pressure from Canada proving to put Mexico under a bit of pressure higher up the field, and I'd like to see them do more of that. If they're going to have some success higher up, Mexico has to be put under more pressure because they're doing very well with dealing with the ball higher up the field, Mexico. And they're in no rush to go forward. They have the 1-0 lead. So Canada's really going to have to push the pace of this game for a bit of a momentum shift, the one that Mexico experienced after getting their first goal in the 27th minute. Ty took over in October of 2021 for Canada. Also played for Canada in 2001-2002. So two managers this evening that have been in these players' shoes now leading them in their attempt to qualify for a World Cup. Another tough challenge from Daniela Monroy, and this time she will be booked. Two hard challenges in a row for the outside back, and Nikayla Small stays down. Indication on multiple fouls against Monroy. The 58th minute card goes to her, and this is a tough challenge. Players getting a bit of a cooling break in the 58th minute as we enter the 59th minute in Santo Domingo. Almost two thirds of the way done through this one. I'm Casey White on the call in the Dominican Republic. One nil Mexico with the lead over Canada. 
players taking the field again as Nikayla Small is back to her feet after the tough challenge from Monroy that saw her getting booked for the offense. Bissette, long service, Espino out, a lot of players in front, it bounces down. But Espino very calm in collecting that one and she'll spring the counter attack through Aviles as Rose gives chase. Great defending from Jade Rose. About a 40 yard sprint, but also composure to keep possession through Kayla Novak. Yet yeah, this one will go out of bounds for a throw into Mexico. Something that'll be interesting to take a look at is what personnel changes might happen throughout this second half as we get a little bit further along. Mexico, perhaps some defensive changes as Malion takes on in the final third. Recycling the other way, Gutierrez finds Vasquez, the goal scorer. Monroy. Dangerous ball by Monroy. Appeared to go off the hand of Jade Rose. Appeals from Mexico, Malion with a hard tackle, but clean in the final third, and that'll be a throw into Canada. And this is the last opportunity off the head, and oh, that's a close one from Villanueva off her head, already on an assist this evening to the first goal, looking for that opportunity on frame. We are having a VAR check seeing if this is a potential penalty. A potential handball against the center back Jade Rose. And there'll just be some moments as our VAR officials, Ekaterina Koroleva and Benjamin Witte, take a look at this and see if it needs some extra attention from our center official. This is the first VAR check of the semifinals. Rather, the one earlier today between the United States and Puerto Rico, no check. This one will be requiring some additional attention from Astra Germajo as she jogs over to the VAR monitor. We'll take a look at the view that she's going to have as our booth looks on and our center official, and this was just such a tough play as Villanueva directs this one towards the direction of the goal. And they'll have to decide if her arm is in an unnatural position here and does it in fact actually hit her arm or her stomach. Mexico obviously appealing for that and this is what Astra Gramajo is taking a look at. It does appear her hand is above where the ball hit, but we'll see as there has been a decision made whether it'll be a corner kick or a penalty. Nope, excuse me, a throw in down in that corner. Good decision by our center official as it became very clear the ball was below Jade Rose's hand. We'll have a substitution. Sivia Wujo coming into the game for Kira Mellenhorst. She'll make way for the midfielder. Mexico trying to keep Canada in their in. And they do so through Gutierrez. Ready, ready. 
Delgado finds space during that rotation. Why clips this one in the backside of Velez. Not able to find that one out of the air. Holly Ward having to do some defensive work and she earns the goal kick for her team. So far, two substitutions for Canada. The halftime substitution of Holly Ward coming on. Now Simi Awujo coming into the game, into that attacking midfielder role. No changes for Mexico yet as we get closer to the midpoint of the second half. But Canada needing to make a few changes, trying to create more opportunities. Monroy. To the back side, Aviles again challenges to the left foot of Vasquez, not able to connect on that one is Vasquez. Mexico will look to recycle possession, played this one in, but well defended by Rose. Aviles on the far side, early cross. Well dealt with by Jade Rose. Right now, Canada under a lot of pressure from Mexico. Two personnel changes, one coming most recently through Simi Awujo, trying to change the trajectory of this game, but Mexico really enjoying a lot of possession right now. Villanueva gets this one off somehow, but Carpenko able to make the save. Mirabel Dominguez active and in instructing her group from the sideline. Burns looks to go forward, draws three, plays this one up, well defended by Jana Gutierrez. Early ball in, Smith goes for the bike. Offside called, and it'll go the other direction. And I like seeing Smith a little bit higher up the, up the field. She's had to drop in in the way that Canada's defending into that more attacking mid false nine role defensively. But when she's closer to the goal, so dangerous, you can see just the creative thought behind going for the bike there. But seven goals on the qualifying tournament. Canada's gonna have to think of ways to get her closer to goal because she can finish very well, even if only given a few opportunities. Ponte recovers well against Aviles. Burns finding the feet of Novak early. Canada looking more dangerous. Smith on the right side, but Novak continues to go. Delgado wriggles her way out of the pressure from Nikayla Small and Monroy trying to get forward on this far side. Molion with the strike. It bounces to Molion again. Not able to connect as Natalia Molion and goes down after the attempt. A second opportunity for Molion and just not well timed going off the Shin guard and out for a goal kick. Seems to have hurt herself a bit, but she's back up. Molly Owen finding herself in the inside space, takes on two, 
Picks on a third, continuing to go. It takes five to stop Malione. Delgado, cheeky touch Delgado to Malione. She lifts it, Karpenko with the save. Scary moments for Canada. Holly Ward trying to find the feet of Smith. It's a good game plan, finding Smith's feet. Just a bit of miscommunication in possession. A substitution for Canada. Maya Grant Clavijo is going to come into the game replacing Olivia Smith in the center forward role. Maya Grant Clavijo, a player that can certainly create attacking chances. Three goals and two assists already to her name during the qualification tournament. Just someone who has a real nose for goal, looks at how to create opportunities out of nothing. So a good substitution coming to, into the game. A bit surprised Olivia Smith coming out. But Canada has proven they can find goals from a lot of different players on this roster. Monroy taking on in the near side flank. Well defended by Burns. Two substitutions for Mexico, Paula Trevero coming into the game for Natalia Malion. It looks like three actually. Maritza Maldonado will also be entering the game. Amanda Marroquin, the center midfielder, will come in and replace the captain, Annette Vasquez, the goal scorer in the 27th minute will come off the field. She's the difference in the score line so far. And Maritza Maldonado taking off Eileen Aviles. So one midfielder and two front runners coming off for Mexico. Maldonado, five goals in this qualification tournament. 20 minutes in to help secure Mexico with their World Cup berth coming into the game. And Maro King coming into the midfield, a steady presence in midfield, great in possession, replacing Annette Vasquez. Monroy takes a touch in line, goal kick. The first three subs used for Mexico in that 71st minute substitution. Anytime the substitutions happen, it's an opportunity for the opposition to take over a little bit of possession. Canada doing so in these last 30 seconds or so, trying to build. Not able to get past Delgado as Marroquin gets her first touch. And as we near 
close to 15 minutes left in regulation. And I think Canada is going to have to start pushing a little bit further forward. Handball on Villanueva, and Canada will have this opportunity to be able to get players higher up the field. But it will be interesting to see, is it the style of play that Canada changes, or do they change tactically on how they get more numbers forward? Because really, Mexico, through their possession, has been able to control this second half, limiting the chances to go forward for Canada. This is a dangerous ball, but right into Espino. Her timing off her line been very good this evening. Well played by Bissett. Two runners in the box. Novak looking to find one of them. This one flicked on. Offside called, a little too eager. Holly Ward on that run. And that was shoulder offside there from Holly Ward, the front runner. Novak coming a little late on Delgado. The initial challenge with Monroy, but Delgado coming over to help earns the foul. Espino will clear. Novak again called for the foul. Good movement off the ball by Villanueva. She'll be able to take over possession. Trying to find Chavero in the far side. Chavero, fresh legs, playing it across. Well cut out by Jade Rose. Behind Carpenko able to take over that one. Foul on Nikayla Small and Mexico will take over. Canada and Mexico both looking to secure the second of three World Cup berths as Brooklyn Courtnall enters the game. Nikayla Small will come out of midfield. The center back coming into the game, so it'll be interesting to see where she inserts in and what personnel change is made. <laughs> On the surface, appearing to be a defensive change, but Burns is higher up the field in midfield. A midfielder throughout her youth career. Burns is now into a more attacking role as Courtnall goes into the back line. Canada last qualifying in 2016, not in 2018. Looking to get back into this one for a chance to qualify. Delgado takes over, has time, will elect to possess. Well done by Delgado. Chavero, very, very clever. Flick, play on, says our center official. This one will be cleared out. Ponte has switched over to this left side, taking over for Zoe Burns, initially being on the right side. 
And this is the portion of the game where a bit of gamesmanship comes in. Canada urging the refereeing crew to make sure Mexico gets the ball in quickly. That one looking like it might have gone over and it did. Portnall not able to keep it in, looking to go forward. Mexico throw. Guzman does well to find Monroy in the space. Great touch from Chivero. Might be a little too heavy. She does get there. No, she does not. Goal kick to Canada. And Canada trying to get numbers forward, but the possession of Mexico just stamping out that effort right now as they're slowing down the game. Karpenko's down, a bit concerning for Canada. There'll probably need to be some quick decisions made here on whether Anna Karpenko can continue. And some considerations for the staff. Obviously, they have a player in Georgia who can come into the game. But if they do get the equalizing goal, is that what they would want between Giorgio and Karpenko? Something to think about for the staff. But either way, Karpenko may not be able to continue. Critical moments right now for Canada as the coaching staff continuing to speak to them about ways to get into this. And really, it can come down to one opportunity and the ability to convert. Some organization as well for the Mexican team. Critical moments as the final 10 minutes are underway. Karpenko hopped a little gingerly there before anything even happened. Pierce she'll be okay and step back in, got a bit of a stretch from her medical staff. struck by Karpenko, but one in midfield by Gutierrez, as she so often has today. Great challenge out of the back from Jade Rose, but that is not going to be allowed. And a card is going to come out from our center official against Jade Rose. For me, that's a great challenge from Jade Rose. A bit harsh on the call, but nonetheless, she will go into the books, the center back. And more valuable time does go off the clock for Canada. Villanueva taken off the field in the 83rd minute after the hard challenge from Jade Rose. It'll be a free kick to Mexico. The expectation is they would most likely play short as they've really done well to try to take the air out of the game by keeping possession and forcing Canada to chase, but perhaps they will look for a goal scoring opportunity. Going long is Monroy. High kick from Marroquin, and it'll go the other way for Canada. Hit 
short. Rose helping that one on as Burns gets a header as well. But the organi organized back line of Mexico retreating quickly. Well taken by Courtnall. Courtnall will get around the outside, creating numbers forward. Awujo gets a good bounce forward, but not to one of her teammates. Awujo again. A lot of space for Ponte. On the left foot is Ponte. Recovering is Mexico. Left-footed ball. Espino snags that one. She's taking a little bit too much time on that left side, but the space starting to open up for Canada. The first opportunity in quite a while for the Canadians. Courtnall trying to win a throw in, and she does on that far side. Mexico trying to get back in early shape. Lopez finds Marroquin in midfield. Pressed by Walk, but Marroquin dealing with the pressure quite well. Three players against Marroquin. Finally dispossesses Grant Clavijo, goes forward. Novak making a run in behind the back line, but not rewarded for the run. Ponte again to this left side. Getting back further in a defensive shape is Mexico. Collected by Chavero. Simi Awujo looking to penetrate as Mexico chases. Precious moments again, ticking off the clock as Mexico earns a throw in. It might seem like something small, but very, very important as Tatiana Flores looks to come into the game. Alexia Villanueva, who assisted on the one goal this evening, comes out of the game for Mexico. Some fresh legs up top as there'll be a big defending effort here needed from Mexico to secure this win and a possible World Cup berth in doing so. Grant Clavijo gets a little bit of a touch, but the midfield pairing of Delgado, Marroquin, and Gutierrez defending quite well in the last five minutes. Good tackle by Burns in midfield. Hard foul on the far side. Jenna Gutierrez taking out Simi Awujo. Set piece to Canada. Gutierrez playing that holding midfield role, just slowing down the play of Canada. Now wearing the captain's armband once Annette Vasquez exited. Long service, trying to be helped on by the forwards of Canada. Awujo plays Courtnall in behind. Can she get there? So close from Brooklyn Courtnall. Appeals for Espino playing quicker from Canada.
Canada has to press, continuing to go forward. They lose possession, gonna have to put Mexico under pressure. And Holly Ward does just that. Good defensive shape from Canada to win back possession. And the fresh legs of Flores giving chase. Ponte taking on one. That one deflected backwards. Guzman will clear. Walk trying to get away from three players of Mexico, and she does. Ponte takes over, has a Wujo on the far side where all the space is. First touch lets her down, but still able to take on. Again, a Wujo getting it across. But the two defenders from Mexico on that far side do well to get out of the way. No corner kick earned, and Espino takes over. Flores doing well to collect that one and tries to send Maldonado. But Carpenko playing with some urgency now as Bissette goes forward, but not a lot of momentum going in Canada's favor. Trevero defends. A lot of space for Burns. She'll look to take advantage of it. Has a Wujo right. Slips in for Kayla Novak, too heavy. And there'll be six minutes of additional time added to the end of the second half. So a lot of time still here for Canada to attempt to mount a comeback and find the equalizer in Santa Domingo to keep their hopes alive of getting this second berth to the World Cup. This one not quite making its way into the penalty area, but Karpenko takes care of that. The set finds herself with plenty of space. Long ball, Wujo helping it on, Greg Clavijo in behind. A little knock there by Lopez, smart by the center back, and Espino able to collect. That one going all the way through. Rose will help it back to Karpenko. The tides have turned a little bit. More momentum going in Canada's favor as Mexico tries to see now this ball in behind from Burns. Ward gets a touch, taken down outside the box. And that is going to be a foul and going to be booked is Espino. A yellow card in the 92nd minute for Espino. A great ball in behind by Burns, and Holly Ward does just enough to get a touch. It was taking her away from goal, or it might have been a different color card, but she did have her covering defenders, Espino. But as Mexico started to get forward, that space in behind the back line, well recognized by Zoe Burns. Could this be the opportunity to equalize for Canada? Step up. Burns was the one responsible for that pass in behind to Holly Ward. Five players in the wall for Mexico. Scary moments for Mexico. Opportunity potentially for Canada. The set taking some space on the near side. Mexico not committing a player to her. It'll be very interesting to see if Burns goes for this one or looks to slip the set in. Canada is so good on second chance opportunities, so Burns needing to force a save from Espino. Runners looking to get into the box. They've scored multiple goals off second chance opportunities so far in this tournament. 
Burns taking her time. She'll step up with the right foot. She's going for it herself, not dipping enough to get that on frame. And that's a missed opportunity for Canada. The best chance of the second half and perhaps the game for the Canadians. And Burns needing to get this one on frame, going for it herself. But the dip just not there to be able to come up over the wall and come down to go into the goal. And Rose gives chase as Canada has two minutes to continue to mount an attack to continue this game on. The set finds Novak, a lot of space. And this is a dangerous ball in, headed down. Holly Ward, so dangerous in the penalty area coming from that backside, another opportunity for Canada. Spino elects to go long. Battle won in midfield by Ponte, but the foul called. And Canada has pushed Ponte higher up the field, going into more of a three-back system. A little bit late in the game doing that, but she has pushed into there. We'll have to retreat after that foul as our center official urges Mexico on. That one deflected, should be a throw Canada's way. It looked, but I guess it's gonna go towards Mexico as Ponte will have to turn and recover. Chavero, she'll try to delay down in this area, not able to do so. And perhaps one more opportunity if Canada can get forward. Scary moments for Mexico securing this lead. Canada continuing to push everyone needing to get forward in this final minute of extra time. Flores trying to collect and she does Chavero. Maldonado is going. Carpenko high as she should be. One by Delgado, Awujo perhaps the last chance to get forward here. Rose plays a great ball long, second opportunity coming. And that's it, Mexico's done it. The 27th minute goal as the players and head coach Maribel Dominguez celebrate as they should. Costa Rica, the FIFA Women's World Cup for the under 20s awaits Mexico with the one nil victory off the Annette Vasquez goal in the 27th minute. Celebrations coming as they should for the entire coaching staff. Congratulations to Mexico, a tough loss for Canada. Santo Domingo hosting this great game and Mexico celebrates. We'll have full-time highlights and stats coming up in just a moment.
vamos a ir un día a Jala. Va, es sueño hecho realidad, ¿eh? Es sueño hecho realidad, vieja, ¿eh? Somos más grandes, ¿eh? Somos grandes, Jala, va. Encontramos con Daniela Monroy. Daniela, felicidades, un gran partido ante Canadá, muy ajustado como se esperaba. ¿Qué opinión le merece de este encuentro? Pues sabíamos que iba a ser un encuentro duro, que es una selección muy fuerte, pero nosotros venimos a hacer nuestro trabajo y a hacer nuestra mejor versión. Un único gol les da el boleto al Mundial que se realizará en Costa Rica. Mucha felicidad se ve en, en el equipo de ustedes. Sí, claro, pues eh, son cosas que se han trabajado, estábamos esperando que cayera el gol, Intentamos ir por más, pero estamos trabajando para meter más y que sigamos dando un excelente trabajo. Se consiguió el primer paso, que era la clasificación mundialista. Ahora van ante Estados Unidos por la final. ¿Irán también a luchar por ese campeonato? Claro, es el primer objetivo, el pase al mundial, y ahora nuestro siguiente objetivo es quedar campeonas. Gracias. with Jade Rhodes. Jade, uh, hello. And you lost, but you are still in the fight for the ticket to the World Cup. What is your opinion about that? You know, it, it's definitely not the result that we were looking for today. Um, it was a hard-fought match, and you know what, we fought until the last minute. I think it's just about, you know, managing our emotions, regrouping tomorrow, and having our sights set on making it to the World Cup. Like, the next game is definitely going to be a fight as well. Puerto Rico is going to give us a run for our money, but it's about how we stick together in these tough moments and we rise above so that we can book our ticket to the World Cup. How do you analyze the, the match against Puerto Rico? Uh, like I said, I think it's, it's definitely going to be a tough match. Um, the third place game is always a hard one because, you know, we're both fighting for that last spot to the World Cup. Um, I think it's just about how we get back to our own identity, how we start playing our own. We get back to, like, like I said, our own identity, back to Canadian soccer. And if we do us better than they do, um, than they do them, you know, the result will, will work itself out. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of emotions on both sides as the semi-final match from Santo Domingo came to a close, but here's how it started. Canada and Mexico facing off in this all important game for a World Cup berth to Costa Rica in August. Jade Rose with this opportunity. 
but Espino up to the task. Aviles and Malion trying to connect as they so often have in this qualification tournament on this ball and behind, but Karpenko able to get it. A tightly contested match with not a lot in it, not too many point blank opportunities. Aviles on this set piece, not able to connect with any front runners going through the back line of Canada. Malion though does find Villanueva and this is the separation in this game. It proves to be the game winner. The left footed volley from Annette Vasquez in the 27th minute, perfectly executed. And Molly Own finding the runner in Villanueva. There wasn't a lot of space to find her, but she does. And the service was just completely perfect for Villanueva. Good first touch, Villanueva keeps it alive back across the penalty area. And Vasquez, the hero for Mexico, in this 27th minute goal, she makes no doubt about it on this finish. Nothing anyone could do. The marking not as tight as it should be in the penalty area. And Mexico would continue to grow in confidence after that goal. Canada really starting out the stronger of the two teams. But Olivia Smith getting this opportunity towards the end of the first half. Espino though able to get a touch on it. Smith playing a bit more defensive today in the way that Canada set up, not able to get a lot of opportunities. Lopez almost connecting on this set piece for Mexico. But a lot of half chances in the first half for both teams. But Mexico would take the 1-0 lead to halftime as they enter the second half. Mexico continuing to establish more and more possession. Villanueva with the opportunity here, but Carpenko good in goal. And they had 55% possession in the first half in Mexico and just continued to grow. And Canada not able to launch much attack forward as Malion gets a shot as well here. Delgado so sophisticated in midfield, involves herself in the attack on that last opportunity. And then Mia Ponte on the left side, looking to go 1v1, plays this one across, nothing to test Espino. The wide areas were an area that Canada was trying to expose, but well dealt with more in the second half by Mexico. And that this is the best opportunity that came in the extra time. Burns on the set piece on the foul committed by Espino, but it goes over. And then this last opportunity, nothing too close, but Holly Ward does get ahead to it but just hopeful opportunities from Canada, not really able to get too many things going forward against this Mexican team who celebrated the 1-0 victory like you should. A lot of emotion from Maribel Dominguez, and you can tell those players love having her at the helm, the former player for Mexican women's national team, as they all celebrate as they should, enjoying the moment of earning their FIFA Women's World Cup under 20 berth for an August and they will play in the championship game on Saturday versus the United States. Canada still in it, looking to play Puerto Rico in the third place game on Saturday as well. That one coming first in the championship to follow. There are two spots now taken from the United States and Mexico to go to the World Cup as we take a look at full-time stats. 10 shots to four for Mexico's favor, 14 fouls to 12. So a pretty combative game and even on both sides, four corners to zero in Canada's favor. And the possession evened out a little bit in the second half, but still in the favor of Mexico, 52% to 48%. A very tightly contested match. There's going to be a rematch of the 2020 championship in which Mexico lost to the United States 4-1. to one. So they will look to try to dethrone the United States on Saturday. But even more importantly so, Canada has another opportunity to get reset, as does Puerto Rico, as they will face off for that final berth to the FIFA Women's World Cup for under-20s and represent the CONCACAF re region. On behalf of the crew, I'm Casey White. So long from Santo Domingo. Have a good night.